Hello everyone, I'm Mike Connell, founder of Boston Making a Difference, here today with another episode of Be Mad Spotlight. And today we have with us Deborah Falzoy, who runs an organization called Dignity Together. It's a serious topic about bullying and abuse in the workplace, and Deborah's doing great work to help people going through that. Deborah, welcome to Be Mad Spotlight. Thanks so much for having me, Michael. So tell us, you know, uh, a little bit about this topic, bullying in the workplace. Some people may not quite understand what it all means. Sure. Um, it's general abuse of power that, that we see at work. So it's generally a boss with a subordinate and they're um, using tactics like verbal abuse or sabotage or just kind of humiliating, intimidating, threatening behaviors um, used to you know, assert their own power and, and abuse it over the their subordinate. It can be, you know, coworker to coworker bullying, but generally there's it's it's involving that power structure. Um, and in terms of different tactics, there's um, you know some interpersonal things like it could be put downs, sarcasm, angry outbursts, um, just excessive criticism, gossip. Um, false accusations, things like that. Um, but it can also come from the organization itself. So it could be um, unrealistic work demands, re removal of tasks that are, are crucial for, for one's job. Um, you know, uh, one, one thing that we see often is bogus performance reviews where, where someone might speak up about something and then the boss will use a, a negative performance review for, for what's typically for a, a very hardworking, um, competent, ethical employee. Um, they'll use that as a mechanism to push them out. So this is something that really, um, you know, there's a, a ton of different tactics that people use to abuse other people at work, but it often results in a ton of of destructive outcomes. So, you know, health harm, um, not just mental health with the anxiety and depression, we see PTSD, there have been suicides from it. Um, people tend to feel trapped with what they're going through. Um, and that can manifest physically into, you know, all sorts of stress related um, symptoms. Um, we've seen destructive destruction of um, marriages, friendships, um, people lose their homes over this because they, they're forced into a situation to choose between their health and a paycheck. And when they, we, they choose their health and leave the job, then they get, you know, all these other um, stresses added on potentially. So, you know, it, we've seen data that shows that this affects um, anywhere from like 30 to 90% of the population. So it really is um, an, an epidemic. And um, the, the issue really is that a lot of people feel that they're being discriminated against, but they can't prove it, especially since the law requires proof of discriminatory intent. So we see this happening mostly with women, um, people of color, and people with disabilities, uh, people in the LGBTQ community, um, workers over 40. So it really is related to discrimination. It's just that this discrimination law isn't strong enough to support these people and to give them any kind of recourse or to prevent the, the, the bullying from happening in the first place, which is really what we want. Okay, so th that leads us into the legislation we talked about prior to the recording. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with that and how people can help. Yeah, so we're trying to introduce nationally um, and in Massachusetts this year what's called the Dignity at Work Act. It's a brand new piece of legislation that would give people who've been targeted at work some kind of legal recourse. It's really aimed at preventing the behavior in the first place. I mean, no law is going to prevent something from happening across the board, but just like with sexual harassment law, it's still happening, it's hard to prove, but the, the introduction of a law actually helped move the needle on, on um, providing safer workplaces for people. So um, that's our goal with the Dignity at Work Act. It would um, provide a, an opportunity for um, targets to be made whole again um, by, by holding their employers accountable for or uh, abuse of power at work. Um, and um, 
yeah, it's, it's, we're looking for people to help um, share their stories or um, help support, you know, this is actually an effort that's part of the National Workplace Bullying Coalition. So we're, we have all sorts of opportunities for people to get involved in terms of research, marketing, fundraising, um, outreaching to unions, outreaching to businesses. Um, but we're, we're really hoping that uh, the legislation will will strengthen on on discrimination law um, by not requiring people to prove intent. Um, and then in terms of other legislation that's been proposed, it's it's stronger because people wouldn't have to wait for their health to be severely damaged in order to seek recourse. And then there's also, um, you know, we're asking in the piece of legislation for an agency to be created because people um, who are most vulnerable are low wage workers can't afford to, to participate in the legal system. It's a pay to play system. And that would provide an agency that they could go through without having to um, have legal representation. So, um, you know, our, we're, we have a great group of people who are, who are advocating to, uh, on this bill and, you know, who, who have, most of them have been um, targets of workplace abuse themselves. And, you know, they wanna share their stories, feel like they have a voice with the with the situation and um, and really make sure that they that this doesn't happen to other people by by getting this law passed. Now, is there anything the audience can specifically do, like call their legislator or uh, sign a petition, anything like that that we can tell them to go ahead and help you with? Yeah. So if you if people go to visit dignityatworkact.org, um, we would love for them to sign a petition or sign up for an action alert. Um, they can get more information on on what we're doing. Sign up to actually get involved, um, and then we can we can keep people in the loop on different um, phases. So right now we're we're um, it's really early on in the legislative session in Massachusetts. It's a two year session, um, and pretty soon we'll have a docket number where we'll we'll try to get as many co sponsors on to the bill as possible. So we'll need as many as many people as possible to contact their legislators, their state legislators about um, this bill. So if people sign up, they'll get notification of when we have that docket number, what they can do, how, how to reach their state legislators, who their legislators even are, what the talking points are. Um, it's all going to be automated. So all they'd have to do is go to dignity at workact.org and, and get that information. That's great. It's, you know, it's good to hear, you know, there's all kinds of things that need improvement out there. And this is one that obviously, uh, you know, needs to be addressed. So, you know, the work you're doing, I'm grateful. And I'm sure many of our viewers are grateful. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the online courses you offer, you know, in this area? Sure. Um, so in my years of working on um, trying to build awareness around legislation, I have heard countless stories from people who have been going through workplace abuse. Um, some have been, you know, looking for either legal help or mental health help, but a lot of people were just looking for um, suggestions on how to navigate what they're going through and also um, how to heal from what they're going through. So once you've um, gone through this, there's a there's a huge sense of betrayal and not just from the boss or the, the, the bully themselves, or um, we call it mobbing when the when the bully gets other people to join in. But a lot of people think that reporting the situation to HR will help them or higher up and that and often that's not the case. HR will often just ignore the situation or retaliate because they can because nobody's holding them accountable. Um, and they don't want the liability of, of, of that, that issue. Um, so the target then feels betrayed by HR or the higher up, and then they assume there's a law that, that makes this behavior illegal and find out that's not the case either, unless you know, they, it, they can prove that it's discrimination happening and discriminatory intent. Um, so there's this other layer of betrayal. So we help people, I help people navigate all of that, either, either what has worked and what hasn't worked for people who've gone through it while they're going through it, or what's, you know, what the normal healing process is, is ruminating part of that, you know, blaming, um, just, just what are, um, 
normal parts of that process. And then just to, just to um, connect with other people who've gone through it. It's, it's a really isolating um, thing to go through. So just the, the ability to connect with people and feel heard and seen is, is uh, really helpful for the people who go through. Okay. So wh why don't you tell us how the audience can get in touch with the, you if you want to share, you know, any contact information, website address and so forth. Sure. Um, for my, for that work, people can visit dignitytogether.org and then they can email me. It's um, on the website, but info at dignitytogether.org. It goes directly to me and I can, you know, help direct people to, you know, wherever they need. We also have free peer support groups every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Zoom. Um, there's a, there's a, you know, we're coming up with a virtual summit. Um, there, there's gonna be a retreat coming up in the fall. So all sorts of ways that people can connect with other targets and, and, um, and go through the recovery process with, with other people. Well, that's great. I'm so glad you got on here with us today. You truly are somebody that's making a difference and that's what we try to spotlight here on BMAD Spotlight, uh, Boston making a difference. We wanna show and uh, you know bring awareness to people's causes uh, when they're helping other people, that's a good thing. So you're doing a good thing, Deborah Falzoy. Thank you so much for being here today and to our audience. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of BMAD Spotlight. We'll see you on the next one.